including many things that have now been admitted as true, and Navy SEAL families that we talked to who came out and said that it was all made up and that a body double was basically killed. I'll break all that down at the start of the next hour. Uh, Jade Helm has blown open worldwide from the German to the Japanese to the Financial Times of London. It is big. Uh, we uh, just have so much to go over. We have this new election in England that is supposedly about giving the UK a voice in the EU. We're going to get David Icke's take on that. Now, David Icke is a very controversial figure. He's a friend of mine. I've met him, hung out with him, been involved with him. He's a very nice guy. Uh, he's a trailblazer. He's written a bunch of best-selling books. The first one I read was like 19 years ago. I thought it was completely crazy. And so much of it then began to come true. Uh, he said and named pedophiles at the BBC here about 12 years ago, and I delayed him. I delayed him and said, David, you can't say names on air uh, that haven't been caught yet. Uh, and with the Jimmy Savelle and others, it all came out just as he said. The hidden rooms, the torture rooms, the necrophilia, all of it. And it just goes on and on. Uh, David Icke was a top BBC presenter on entertainment and sports show, champion uh, goalie. He was the head of the Green Party, a rising star, uh, until he had a vision. And it took him years to extrapolate everything that happened in the vision when he was in Peru. Say what you want about it, a mega brainstorm if you're an atheist, whatever. The point is, he's a very interesting individual. And I remember reading one of his books, I even forget which one, about 10 years ago, and I was starting to think, maybe, maybe this guy's on to something more than I thought. And he was saying the whole universe is a hologram held together by an artificial energy source. Well, last year, MIT came out with these new dark matter sensors. We'll pull those articles up. And they said there's something artificial holding reality together, another energy source much larger, much more powerful. And Science Daily wrote a new article about this a few weeks ago. April 27th, is the universe a hologram, Vienna University of Technology, and says that their mathematical equations, but also models, but also testing in a lab, is showing uh, that reality is a projection. And so I wanted to get David Icke on to talk about this till the bottom of the hour. Then we're going to shift gears into ISIS and global destabilization and the pedophile rings and what's at the bottom of the spider hole. Uh, DavidIke.com is his uh, website. He's written 16 books, uh, and he is, uh, again, on the air with us. His first big book, the one that I read, was The Biggest Secret. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Pleasure, Alex. Uh, there's a lot to get through. Where are you right now? Are you out there on the Isle of Man? Isle of Wight. Um, the um, difference between the Isle of Man and the Isle of Wight is the, uh, the Isle of Man has... Um, uh, uh, it, uh, it's a tax haven, uh, so uh, the Isle of Wight's not. Oh, that's where I. Well, it's it's certainly beautiful out there. I haven't been to that particular area, but I've seen videos of it. David, there's so much to get into. I want to talk about the state of the world with you, but let's talk about the state of reality. Well, the thing is, Alex, you know, um, I, I've been on this just past 25 years, um, just uh, about three or four weeks ago, and I've had as much ridicule and condemnation from the alternative media, much of it, as I have from the mainstream media. Because my interest is not having a statue built to me or um, being uh, fated as, as anything. It is quite simple. It is to get to the bottom of what the heck and the hell is happening in this world and what this world is. And what when you do that, it means all the shackles have to come on, off your mind, your credulity, and, and you have to become open, not to believing everything, but open to all possibility, and letting the information be your guide rather than preconceived idea. And so that's what I've done. I followed the information, and it's taken me into some very, uh, on the face of it, strange areas and, and to some strange and to many people extreme conclusions. But I've said all along that if what you say has validity, then you will eventually be shown to be making some kind of sense. And so 
you know, everyone in the alternative media has to take a ridicule, dismissal, and condemnation to an extent because they are challenging the accepted pro programmed norms that people are uh, down downloading throughout their lives from cradle to grave. But if you keep going beyond where the majority, if you like, the mainstream of the alternative media is, then you get the same treatment from them that you get from the mainstream media. But, like I say, if you're interested in this rather than the popularity contest, then you keep speaking your truth, you keep researching your truth, um, and if it is truth, then at some point it's going to be sh shown to be so. And what is happening now with some of these more, uh, these stranger um, areas of what I've been thinking about, like the nature of the holographic reality that we live in, is that mainstream scientific um, programs and studies, there's another one at the University of Bonnie, and there are others around the world, are concluding that actually the mathematics, the science, um, puts the fact that we are living in uh, a reality that is solid in the way that we experience it and we perceive it, but actually not solid in its base form. If you um, look at uh, um, a good system, what you have... Uh, um, behind me here is a screen, uh, and on that side are words, and there are pictures, and there can be moving pictures. Um, but that's not because the moving pictures and words and uh, what have, have your graphics have actually been uh, put into the computer in that form. They go into this tower, or they come off the internet in the form of electronic codes and um, electronic um, sequences to processes. It's the computer that decodes that information into what we see on the screen, which is very different to the form that it actually takes before it's coded. And what, we're, uh, what we call the, the human body is a biological computer, biological um, in the sense is that it's still a technological computer in that in, instead of like a, a desktop, it takes data and it decodes it according to the way it's told to and, and is pro programmed to decode. A biological computer can take information and it can assess it and it can make decisions upon it, which is the body's doing all the time. What we call the immune system um, is not something that we, we have to... Um, interact with all the time we don't don't have to we don't have to say oh immune system is something wrong down there with me, 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 me leg and you go and have a look the immune system is con constantly seeing the the body computer and, and it is making decisions on what it's going to do as a result of that otherwise we'd all be dead and so in the same way the biological computer we call the body is decoding information from this um, uh, this matrix. This technologically, in the end, although much beyond any technology we can imagine, this technologically generated information source and sources, and we are therefore um, seeing and appearing to experience a world that appears to be solid, that appears to be three dimensional, but is actually holographic and if you look at, 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 at what holograms are that we actually um, can buy in the shops they appear to be three-dimensional but they're actually not the base form of this reality the base form of the body the base form of everything in this reality is an information field and we then decode the information from that into an apparently three-dimensional world and a solid world which as quantum physics has, has um, absolutely shown to be the case, a solid world that cannot possibly be solid. Now, why is this important, Alex? It's because it's with this knowledge that those deep, deep in the shadows, beyond the politicians, beyond the, um, the bankers um, in, in, in 
in the way that they um, operate the banking system beyond the corporation. Would you call them the visitors? The, the the well beyond beyond that which we we can see. Indeed, within the human world, beyond that we can we can see. I mean, the idea now among anyone with a brain on active duty that people who are apparently in power, like politicians and presidents and prime ministers are actually the ones calling the shots is, is, is completely untenable or totally ludicrous. But what I'm saying is beyond that, beyond what we see in the sh shadows, they know the nature of our reality. Therefore, they are using that knowledge against Stay there. Your Skype's cutting up a bit, David. It, 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 excellent point. I'm going to come back and recap that and then ask the question, how are they understanding how the world really works? manipulating it and towards what end because undoubtedly all the subliminals all the programming the chemicals in the food and water to suppress our uh, iqs what's the end game what's the reason and then mit came out two years ago in fact i ought to google and find that article we're showing a few new ones today different universities saying basically the same thing that there's an out artificial power source holding it all artificially together the dark matter and the different dimensional uh, equations that are out there but regardless it's good to think about big things and transcend the little globalist who want to wall us in to an even smaller reality everything they do is about dumbing people down destroying their creativity their imagination and we can see this war accelerating a desperate attempt to ridicule questioning anything so I think David Icke's very healthy uh, in that he simply transcends their whole false debate. Uh, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. David, I've been researching this myself 25 years. I've been on air 20. And the deeper I research it, you just come to the realization, this isn't even good for the elites. As you said, the super puppets, the super class. When you get to the bottom of the rabbit hole, as far as I've gone, it's a hatred of life, a hatred of humans, a hatred of anything wholesome and, and, and good, and real sustainability. Uh, it, it's, it's just blacker than hell. Uh, it, is, it is a spirit of evil. And if you're Christian, you say it's the devil. If you're a, you know, a Hindu, I guess something similar. But, but the point is, it's real. And there seem to be people that are energized, possessed, running that program in their mind. And then you look at the research, and I've, I've infiltrated Bohemian Grove, as you know. I've covered Skull and Bones. I mean, e even an atheist would look at this and say, these people really believe they're getting divine information from dark entities that, that, that want human blood in every culture. And you've talked about that. You've written books about that. So regardless, from a sociology, anthropology perspective, why does this keep manifesting? And then you just go further, but then say so many other things that, I mean, you were the first person I heard 20 years ago talking about pedophiles running England. Now it's confirmed. Now they say national security can't investigate. Uh, I'm taking up your time here. Just, just, It just blows me away. What are they trying to suppress? What reality are they trying to suppress What's the end game, David uh, Ike? Right, I'm, I'm on the phone now, as uh, you can see. Yes, it's, it's crystal uh, clear now. Thank you, sir. Audio, yeah. Well, just from what you've kind of listed there, Alex, um, I mean, I could speak for like two hours because there's so many elements to it. But what you were talking about is summed up by a word I've used over and over um, over the years, and that's inversion. We are living in an inversion, and therefore, um, a world that could be about love, uh, that could be about harmony, is inverted. So it's about hatred, it's about disharmony, uh, or that's what this uh, network, both seen and hidden, is trying to create. And so when you talk about um, these entities, um, which go under endless names. I mean, you know, one of the frustrating things, Alex, is when I hear people who follow various religions who, who say, you know, things that I say are a load of nonsense or it's anti their religion, uh, they, should, they should read their religious books a bit more because um, what um, some 
uh, cultures refer to and ancient cultures and peoples refer to as archons, i.e. non-human entities manipulating our world through um, these networks that we talk about and, and expose. So the Christians talk about demons, exactly the same thing. In the Islamic um, belief system, they talk about jinn, same thing. In, in uh, Central America, shaman talk about the flyers, same thing. In um, uh, the Zulu culture of South Africa, they talk about the Chittahuri, same thing. It's a universal theme. And what these entities, another universal theme, feed off is the energy of death and suffering. Um, you know, when that's your energy source, what do you want to do? You want to create more and more of that energy source. So what happens? You create a society, a fake reality, a, a matrix that is designed and a hierarchical structure of power and imposition that is designed to create maximum amounts of that energy. Well said, DavidIke.com. We've got to go to break. Give me, give me the floor when we come back. 18-minute segment coming up. We're we know the history we're given is not the real history of what's happened on this planet. The elites themselves are obsessed basically with what you see in the movie Prometheus. That's what MIT and Harvard, even the New York Times, the majority of their scientists believe uh, that the planet was terraformed, that we were put here. Uh, the elites believe that uh, they're another species from us. That's in the BBC and other major publications. This is what they believe. And then you've got David Icke, a top news presenter, making millions of you know pounds over the years, very successful, a shining star in the UK media, the head of the Green Party, and he basically, like I guess you could say, like Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus, gets knocked down, heat stroke, whatever you want to call it. I want him to talk about that briefly, and suddenly has all this information. And again, he didn't have a motive to do all this when he was already on top. He was ridiculed for a, a, a decade intensely. It was like the joke. He can tell you the story, but I, I followed it. And so regardless, he's got amazing courage. And so much of what he said scientifically, politically has come true. And I want to cover the waterfront because it's hard to get David Icahn. He's a busy guy. Maybe he can stay a few minutes in the next hour. But that was a short segment, David. I want to give you the floor about what's at the bottom of the rabbit hole and then tying it in. But, but you look at the environmental movement. It ignores genetic engineering. It ignores nuclear reactors, 90% leaking. A new one in the U.S. had an explosion and they shut down a reactor. It's not even hardly news. Uh, the elite themselves don't care about the planet, but they have a predatory hatred of their fellow humans and are teaching us that human life is worthless and teaching us not to stand up for each other and teaching us this inverse. Uh, you know, they say the star symbolizes a human, the head, two arms, two legs. The pentagram is a human upside down. But, but they're selling this, and I see this glare in people's eyes who've succumbed to this spirit of the world versus those of the, us that, not that I'm perfect, more and more are going towards love and, and freedom and, and compassion and being empowered. So I see a, a, an acceleration towards a, a paradox where there's a huge amount of people awake and, and intensifying their understanding, but also a large group of people that are going to get crazier and crazier and more turned over uh, to this crazed spirit. David Icke, you've got the floor for the next 15 minutes. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. I wish I'd have made millions <laughs> the CBC. Uh, uh, but, um, yeah. But you were I mean, one of the top people in the country, according to mainline news articles. Yeah, I, I, yeah but um, yeah, I, I was on the television a lot, but um, uh, uh, millions, my goodness me. Uh, you know, I, the, you used to wear um, you know, BBC jackets, small checks, you know. Um, but anyway... Um, what we're talking about here is, uh, I would suggest, where um, the alternative media needs to start turning its head, because much of the alternative media, and I'm not knocking it, I mean, hold my hand up, anyone who's putting out information that's suppressed and this network doesn't want out, round of applause, I say. But much of it is walking around the edge of the rabbit hole. It's not actually in, in it yet. So deep uh, does it go. We have a situation where 
to answer your question, and people say this all the time, why would they destroy the planet? Why would they have the Fukushimas? Why would they be um, uh, filling our atmosphere with staggering millions and millions of times more radiation than there was 50 years ago? Um, why are they creating this, what, transformed radiation atmospheric reality? What about the chemtrails and their part in all this? What's going on? Why would they do this? Because um, we have to, I would suggest, face the fact that we are being manipulated and this planet is being taken over, this uh, reality of ours is being taken over by entities that operate beyond human sight, and human sight is so narrow, it's almost laughable what scientists call visible light. It's a tiny, almost infinitesimal fraction of what there is to see. And because we, through these biological computers, can only see a certain, in, just ridiculously, I can't tell you, narrow frequency band, uh, which we see as a visual world, um, it means that anything that is on a different frequency to that band, uh, which is, in effect, everything else that exists, um, we can't see. And these uh, entities and this force operates outside of our, most of the time, outside of our frequency band that we can actually uh, see. But what it does, because it's an inversion, an inversion of the natural order, the natural order it's about love, it's about balance, it's about harmony. So what we have is an inversion of the, of the natural order. That's their world. I mean, this is where the religions talk about, you know, the, the, the hell and all that stuff. And what they're doing is seeking to change our world into theirs so they can take it over. And what they've done up to this point is create a network of hybrid interbreeding bloodlines that we call royalty right back into history. What, 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 why were the royals um, of, of all the cultures um, claiming the right to rule because of their bloodline? Because it was the bloodlines as they saw it of the gods, which is how they perceived these entities. And then uh, when the, um, the people started to reject over royal dictatorship, they went into the dark suits. They became the bankers, the major politicians. They became the corporate heads. They became the people that um, run uh, our society, our world, both in the in the world that we can see and in the shadows. Now, from your and, view, are they are they interdimensionally possessed, like the Bible would say, or or or, or are they actually genetically uh, uh, hybrids? Well, um, both for this reason. Um, what we've got, as I mentioned earlier, what we've got to start to realize, if we're going to grasp this um, situation that we're facing, is what we see as a three-dimensional world, solid world, i.e. the body, is a projection, exactly what these scientists are talking about. It's a projection. It's a projection from the base form, which is the energetic field. Um, just as this, uh, these pictures on a computer are a decoded representation of information in other forms within the computer. Therefore, um, what um, we are um, experiencing is a fake reality because what we are um, experiencing as a three-dimensional world is not the uh, place of love and harmony and uh, balance that it should be, but an increasing inversion of it, which is what? The opposite of that. Because these uh, entities feed off the frequency of death, because everything has a frequency of suffering, of um, deprivation, of fear. This is the, the major four-letter word that controls the world. It means that to take over our reality, they have to generate maximum amounts of that energy. So they have structured society through these bloodlines that end up in the positions of power to create maximum amounts of that energy. So look through known human history. Endless wars, endless suffering, endless deprivation, hunger, destruction, getting more and more all the time. 
And what they're doing is imposing their world, their inverted world, upon us. And the more they do so, the more power they have to influence this world because we're getting closer in frequency to where they are. And so when you look at the word live, what is the word live inverted, written backwards? Evil. What we call evil is just an inversion of the natural order of life, of joy, of love. And the idea is that they eventually so transform our energetic frequency state that our world literally becomes theirs and they won't even need their bloodlines then. Um, um, what we've... Um, what we need so you're saying it's like an avatar. They've got humans that operate as their earth suits. They want to change the atmosphere like terraforming us to then take over completely. Yeah, I mean, there are certain movies, in fact, more and more movies, Alex, that actually mirror this um, and, and what's happening. Now, classically, what I'm describing in terms of this fake reality that we decode and, and believe, therefore, to be real is the Matrix, the the world uh, depicted by the Matrix trilogy is absolutely the one that we live in, in its theme. And then you rightly talk about the Avatar movie, which again was mirroring reality. What happened there? You had the Navi Society, the Blue People Society, that was taken over by um, people that looked outwardly as if they were the Navi, the Blue People, but actually within that Form, that out of form were, was the force in the Avatar movie that was taking over that reality. And that's what we're experiencing. And this is why I say, um, with as much um, a passion as I, I could muster to the alternative media, you know, what's been done so far in uncovering the five le sense level of this is brilliant, fantastic, round of applause, you know, punch the air, let's have a cheer. But if we're going to understand how we're manipulated ultimately and therefore um, create an understanding of how not to be in, in deep in the rabbit hole, we've got to start opening minds to the fact that what's happening with the banking system and ISIS and engineered wars and engineered banking crashes and engineered uh, uh, political systems is the, the play out, the, the projection uh, which is there to manipulate our society within the holographic world that we experience, but actually where it's coming from is beyond human sight. And um, this is very difficult for people to grasp because from cradle to grave, all this stuff is, ri is ridiculed and dismissed as crazy. Now, let me ask this question. If um, this stuff is so crazy, why do these people in their satanic rituals and their secret society rituals, the deep uh, um, extreme ones, why do they um, interact with another force beyond human sight? They're interacting with what? What Christians call demons, what uh, the uh, Islamic world calls jinn. They are interacting with these entities. That's why they do it. And in terms of possession, everything is a frequency. Thus, what your type of genetics is, is dictating the frequency of your, your, your body, your biological computer. Therefore, those hybrid bloodlines that have a far, far greater infusion of this archon, if you like, demonic, whatever you want to call it, genetics in the hybrid, that means that their frequency is much closer to that of these entities, thus they become possessable on a scale that even the the mass of humans are not possessable in that frequency. Sense. So you're saying they're basically drivable. They have the they have the software to interface. Exactly what these bloodlines are, Alex, is basically a, a particular type of biological computer which allows these entities which have no empathy, which feed off death, which glory in death, which love death, uh, for which death is their reality, it, it, they are vehicles for these entities to manipulate our world. So, 
When you look at these bloodlines and how they can create mass murder in what we call wars, how they can do the, the unbelievable things they do that create the, the shocking, unspeakable terror, horror, and um, suffering that they do, um, and people kind of have dismissed that. You have come across this. Oh, no, they'd never do that. No, you would never do that because you have the ability to empathize. You have the ability to um, take the f the, an understanding of the feelings and, and the suffering that your actions are making other people suffer. Once you are uh, of a, uh, uh, if you like, a genetic type and of a... Um, a, a consciousness, this demonic consciousness, you have none of those fail-safe mechanisms of behavior. Not only do you not have empathy with the suffering you cause, you love it because you feed off it. And so um, these people are not seeing the world the way we see it. Look at bankers and the way they make people uh, uh, suffer all over the world by their manipulation of finance. They feed off that. And there's a word for it. Ask anybody. Go to the dictionary, look up this word, or go on the Internet and look for a definition of this word, and you will find that the definition of it is exactly the personality type that I have just described. The word psychopath. Why do we have psychopaths running the world in um, all these areas, all these institutions that dictate society? Why are we having, Alex, more and more psychopaths systematically recruited into law enforcement to impose the will of the political corporate banking uh, psychopaths upon the people because the psychopathic mentality is the mentality of these archontic demonic entities and it's just been transferred through for the reasons I talk about into our reality through these particular bloodlines which don't just operate in the elite they operate within human society as well now You've mentioned pedophilia, because all these dots connect. All these dots connect, because if they didn't, then it couldn't be true, because everything connects in the end. What um, these entities are, want to feed off, more than, almost more than anything else, is the energy of children before puberty. We see the, uh, the point of puberty as a hormonal change. Yes, within the hologram, where people uh, see the body in terms of its physical functions or hormone functions, it is a hormonal change. But the hormonal change is merely a holographic expression of an energetic change in the base field. And thus, what they want is the energy of children before that puberty uh, energetic change happens. And let me briefly stop you for a moment. Whether or not this is demonic, spiritual, or whatever, for anybody out there, it's a fact that every civilization ends up falling to secret society cults that demand burning or chopping or eating or, 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 or cutting the hearts out of children. Every culture d ends up being run by people that build temples, uh, generally pyramids, and then want to do this to children, whether it was in Europe, whether it was in the Middle East, whether it was in Africa, whether it was in uh, Mesoamerica. Every culture ends up going to human sacrifice, and the children are what are coveted. So what is that? What is happening? I mean, you can't deny that. I mean, normal people would never even think of such a thing. Um, and I have that question A, and then B, David, I'm a very loving person. I have intense empathy. But when someone messes with my family or, or someone, when I think about these elites, then I have fiery rage and, you know, the propulsion to strangle them. Uh, now, I understand that negative, violent energy is bad, and, these, and, and, you know, that's what the dark side's into. But what would you call the energy on the other side to stand up and crush these people? Well, uh, you know, um, there's this ancient theme throughout uh, uh, history of... Uh, cultures sacrificing young virgins to the gods. Well, the gods are these entities, and young virgins is just code for children, for the very reasons I'm talking about. And the reason, Alex, that there is such a massively greater ratio, I mean, there are so many in the general population, it's staggering, but 
the reason there's a far greater ratio of pedophiles in the upper echelons, did I say upper? Echelons of society, is because of the, they are possessed people, possessed entities, possessed biological computers. And while the, uh, the sexual act is going on with the child, these entities are drawing off through the conduit, if you like, of, of the uh, pedophile, the child's energy. And it's not just in the modern world that you see this and, and come across this. They're vampires. You, you look, they're vampires. They're, they're energetic vampires. Now, this, that, that's an interesting point for this reason. What do Satanists do? They feed off blood. They drink blood. Uh, blood is vital to them. What does blood carry? It carries the genetic code for, for a start, but also the, the blood is a expression of the energy, energy that I'm talking about. They like to terrorize a child first, then yeah. slit their wrist, and basically bleed them out over several hours to get the maximum torture. Psychopaths talk about using somebody up, and that, and that horrifying them gives them an energy uh, I mean, undoubtedly, this is going on. Yeah, I mean, when, when, you, when you look at what we call acupuncture, acupuncture, people say, oh, they put needles in the, in the toe to, to, to cure a headache. It's nonsense. So, well, well, no, actually, you're just ignorant, mate. What acupuncture is doing is, um, through the needles and other um, uh, processes, it's balancing the energy flows through what are called meridians. Now, these can be, these can be identified. These can be uh, shown to exist. They are lines of energy going all around the body. And because they go in, in, in circuits, if you've got a block um, in the circuit that's in your foot, that's where the block is, it can affect the, the head where, where that uh, circuit also goes through. And so to take the block out of the foot or the toe or whatever can remove the, 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 the effect, which is the headache. Now, what these meridian lines of energy are, what the Chinese called energy qi, they are the energetic expression of the blood system, of the arteries within the, within the hologram. And so what the Satanists in our reality are doing are drinking the energy of that person via the conduit of blood, while the entities beyond human sight, some of them within these more extreme uh, uh, satanic um, uh, rituals, actually within sight of the, of the uh, Satanists in the ritual. I've talked to endless Satanists who've described this manifestation of these entities in some of these really um, uh, powerful rituals. They are feeding off the energy of the person directly in an energetic form because they're taking the energy on another frequency beyond human sight. And that's what they're feeding off. And so when you have a war when you have what this ISIS organization is doing, when you have uh, suffering of, of any kind um, uh, in the way that we see in this bloodletting, what is a war? It's a bloodletting uh, frenzy. And what these entities are doing with that energy is feeding off it. If we had a world of harmony, of love, of balance, these, energy, these entities would not be able to exist here because their energy source will... Well, I've talked to a lot of veterans and a lot of from World War II on, and they say, they won't talk about it, but they say during mass death, the weirdest stuff goes on. Yeah. And, and, and I would imagine that's because the energy is so much stronger in those areas. And would it be if we could see like a bunch of vultures converging more of these entities in those areas? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's so much art. There's so much. I mean, I'm I'm not into uh, what my father used to call bricks and mortar religion, um, and I'm not. I wouldn't give what I I see, by the way I see the world a name. But there is so much in religious texts, which are which are ancient texts um, uh, that um, are recalling and recording things that went on a long time ago, which are actually telling the very story that I'm telling here. But they don't, uh, people don't see that connection. Once you, you read the stories from the point of view of what's happening now, it all starts to make sense. The reason these people don't act like uh, what we would call humans, these bloodlines, these networks of uh, 
of evil is because they're not like us. They don't see the world like us. If we could just see the world through their eyes for five minutes, the whole world and everything that happens in it would suddenly fall into place. We'd go, oh, I see it now. That's why this is going on. And, and so it's, you know, it, the idea that within this narrow band, this ridiculously narrow band of frequency scientists call visible light, that we can know everything, whether it's mainstream or alternative or whatever, is a, a form of extreme ignorance as well as a form of extreme arrogance. Thus, whatever we know is what we know now or think we do. There's always, always vastly more to know. And if the alternative media comes to a certain um, list of conclusions and stops and won't go any further, then they're not going to get to that point where we go beyond the sure, movie sure. screen that we see to the projector well, that's projecting the movie. Well, David, I, here's what I know. What the globalist is doing, well, what we can prove is show over the top. And I want to keep you a little bit longer if you can do it to finish up and talk about what okay. you got coming up next. That the sky is already the limit. And, and I want to talk about... I want to discuss with you some of those things we know are going on that are crazy and then ask you where you think it's all going. David Icke, DavidIcke.com. And, and he puts off a really good vibe. Uh, I think David Icke means what he's saying. I think he is very eccentric. Uh, and, and, I, and I mean that in a good way. Um, and I think in my gut, I know, it's very healthy to just completely go a trillion miles out from this to look at it from way far back and then come back and look at it real close because I look at this world and let me tell you folks we're not in Kansas anymore and I can't get the public to just admit what's real I mean what what's admitted in the five senses and then I just pick up the the the, the well I see the trail of destruction behind the globals but then I pick up on the way that they act the way they behave and I've been around a lot of their minions, and it's like their minions aren't even really alive until they're doing something bad, and then they kind of activate and manifest. And I bet it's even wilder than what David Icke's saying. I mean, my gut more and more, uh, and it's never been wrong, just tells me that we're in the middle of something so fantastic. He'll be with us to 20 after. This is a short segment. David... How is the fight going against the, the, the psychopaths and their group consciousness, if you look at it from an atheist perspective or, you know, from uh, any other perspective, regardless, this is going on. How is the fight going for human consciousness? Because they're really pouring it on right now to suppress people awakening. And, and, I, and I think this was what you said 15 years ago is true. I see this year and next year, the next few years as a critical time. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. Uh, because... In the end, it's a choice. People say, how will it turn out? Well, it depends on the choices that are being made. What you will see now, Alex, is something I've been talking about for a long time and what we now see. Um, I mean, I was reading an article today which was basically asking the question, uh, what the heck is ha happening to the human race? Some of these extraordinary things going on with people biting people's faces off and stuff like that it was talking about. Well... <laughs> Going back to what I've been talking about here, the awakening is the awakening to harmony. It's the awakening to, um, to, to balance. And the more you awaken to that, the more you open your mind and expand your mind, uh, the more you start to see the world in a greater and greater uh, way in terms of seeing what's really happening it, it, as opposed to what is um, supposed to be happening and we're told is happening. People start to see things. And what do they say? They say, why didn't I see it before? It's so obvious because your mind was closed before and thus when it was closed, it was picking up a certain band of um, perception and now you are expanding your mind and uh, literally opening your mind to a greater possibility now you're picking up a much wider frequency of insight, of possibility. Thus, you're seeing things um, differently. But on the other side, what we're seeing is people that are uh, getting pulled more and more into this inversion 
becoming more and more an expression of that inversion. So we're seeing, I, I, I would, if you, people read my books from 10, 15 years ago or 15 years ago, they'll say I was talking about the, the fork in the road, the parting of the ways. And we're seeing it. Those that are awakening to a greater understanding of the world and those who are getting more and more pulled into it. And maybe next time I come on, Alex, we can um, relate what I've said here to the transhumanist agenda. Let's do that when we come back. We've got 12 minutes when we come back. Let's just do a preview. If you want to come back soon, we'd love to have you. DavidIke.com. Tell us about some of your new speaking engagements coming up. People can find all that at DavidIke.com. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com. We're looking at the big picture here today, pulling back and getting David Ike's perspective on the world. And I'll tell you this, it's a lot more accurate than what we're getting from people like, uh, you know, Piers Morgan. And do a whole breakdown. I know he does like 12-hour, 10-hour seminars to thousands, tens of thousands, in some cases around the world. And I think it's healthy because people need to break with the system. I mean, everything they do is about lying and hoaxing and deceiving and... Uh, David, you were talking about the fork in the road. People are either really waking up or they're going deep into the mind control. Diabetes is up several thousand percent in the U.S., spreading into Europe. Uh, I know it's not supposedly transmittable, but the point is the things we're having put in our food and water are that, that, <laughs> that help trigger it. <coughs> We've got so much happening. We've got cancer exploding. We've got uh, just all forms of evil intensifying. We've got in the media and the culture... Uh, just selling uh, the most horrible things and where torturers of children are actually the good guys, you can see the inverse taking action. And you can't just chalk it up to deviance or to decadent societies going into decline. Uh, this is a manifestation of evil. Uh, and the churches won't fight it. They're busy uh, glitter bugging and you know, teaching magical thinking to people that it, you know, they'll tell God what to do and all this bizarreness. What is it all headed towards, David, and are we winning as free humanity? I mean, if, if this was a soccer game, a football game, where are we? Well, um, having, having just passed the point of uh, 25 years on this journey um, and looking what it was like then to what it is now in terms of people being aware that the world's not like they thought it was, well, I mean, we have made the most fantastic strides, the most fantastic um, uh, a, a achievement in in what we've managed to do so far, um, but where's it leading? I mean, it, see, because everything connects to everything else. Everything you everything you say comes in and connects somewhere. So uh, you know, I, I've been having a chat today to uh, a, a friend of mine who uh, has studied DNA and uh, seen uh, DNA uh, in various uh, studies it's been involved in. And uh, what he was saying is uh, DNA is definitely getting weaker and it's definitely mutating. Something's going on at that level big time. I was reading a story, uh, it was on my website and probably others too, um, I think it was yesterday, where a study, a scientific study, mainstream, it has looked at the DNA of the poor, the urban poor as they call them, in Detroit and found that DNA is being uh, fundamentally affected to the point where it is um, reducing uh, more and more significantly the length of life of those people. This all fits. Why? Because DNA and RNA, which is fundamentally connected, um, are receiver transmitters of information. That's what they. That's what they are. They receive and transmit. And they're being told to die. They're being told to turn off. Yeah. Well, what? Um, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example of, of what I mean. Um, a, a Russian scientific study uh, changed frog embryos to salamander embryos by broadcasting the um, information of the salamander embryo to the frog embryo I saw and that. transformed it, right? Now, why can they do that? Because DNA is a receiver transmitter of information. And I said before, everything is a frequency. So, healthy food, healthy organic food, clean water is a frequency. Polluted water, I mean, hello, genetically modified food is another frequency. Um, and so when we are eating food or drinking whatever 
Uh, when we uh, sit in school all day in Wi-Fi fields of radiation, when we are increasingly uh, having our atmosphere transformed by, in terms of its radiation uh, um, content on a fantastic scale, um, we are seeing that, we're seeing food as, as in the holographic uh, level as, as something on the plate, but in its base form, it is an information field, and that distorted information field we call the rubbish food that we get and the, and the polluted water, etc., and the Wi-Fi fields, is interacting with the DNA, and it is changing it. What is a distorted information field going to do to another information field that's receiving it? It's going to distort it, and that's what's happening. Let and me stop you. Let me stop you, because while you're speaking, they're Googling and putting up mainline prestigious universities admitting that our DNA is unraveling, degenerating, our sperm counts down almost 90%. Uh, they're, admitting, th th they're admitting that they can charge DNA with the program sequence of another animal, and it will actually imprint that. So it's, it's documented, and they know they're doing it. You wrote about this 20 years ago, and now they're just now admitting it. They are purposefully reprogramming us to turn us into abominations. I mean, this is sick. I mean, well, the, I mean, the, if I was a foreign is, alien force, this is how I'd take over. Here's Alex, that, you know, um, you know, these, these ancient, endless um, stories all over the ancient world of the gods um, uh, interbreeding with humans and transforming the human form. Well, if you understand how DNA works, you don't, you don't have to mutate the species and change the species by um, sexual procreation. I mean, how long would that take? You can do it by transmitting the information um, of the form you want to turn us into to the DNA on its frequency, and as it receives it, it will mutate in accordance with that information. Sure, your DNA is a wireless receiver, yeah, and there's okay. real Wi-Fi. That's why they can plug wires into people's brains now and make yeah. them stop having epilepsy. We are literally being programmed. Yeah, and, and this is where the transhumanist agenda comes in. I mean, uh, engineered wars, engineered um, uh, financial crashes, all these things Food. are absolutely vital to know about. They're absolutely vital to circulate and explain. But beyond that, the biggest agenda of all is the transhumanist agenda, because I've talked about the fact that this is a biological computer. They want to put technological computer software into the biological computer so that they can control it and control its perceptions and feed its perceptions on a level that we've not even seen so far. They, uh, we talk about um, smart uh, meters, smart TVs, smart phones, smart in front of all these new technologies. Everything with smart in front of it is designed to speak and communicate with everything else with smart in front of it. And thus, uh, what they're creating is a sub-reality, an energetic sub-reality uh, within a certain frequency band, the frequency band of human brainwave activity. And the idea is that they connect, if they can get technology inside of humans, the connection will be obviously technology to technology. They will connect the human mind, the human perception processes to this um, smart grid. Sure, reality. it's artificial telepathy, and it's funny you say that. We were uh, Google last year declassified from their own corporate records uh, their own founding meeting 16 years ago where they had the billionaire investors. They go, why don't we know the searches? They said, it's not that. Everyone's going to feed the reality into us. We're going to have an AI that's a mass hive consciousness tied into all these devices that are integrated, and it will now be a new reality. So, that's e and that's exactly what's happening, Alex, and that's why Google, I mean, Google is absolutely at the center of this. It's no accident whatsoever. But not only does Google dominate the Internet, and the Internet is fundamental to this technologically generated fake reality they're building and, and want to attach us to, but they've also uh, got this Google X laboratory. They're also buying up robotic companies to create uh, uh, artificial... It's an AI takeover. Robots. The word is it's already artificially intelligent. We're in a science fiction movie. It's taking over. It's already making the decisions. This is the point, but... If you, um, 
See, what's happened up to this point is people have been pulled out of their expanded uh, level of awareness, their true self, into the five senses by society being totally driven and um, focused upon the five senses. Everything's about look at this, smell this, taste this, all of it. And the education system is about locking people into the five senses and the left side of the brain, which connects more than any other part of the brain into the five senses. And people then get locked in a tiny, tiny band of sure. five sense reality. Uh, but what they want to do with the, um, uh, the transhumanist agenda is take that another massive step forward. So instead of just locking people in the five senses, so that's the only reality they perceive, so they think people like me are crazy because I'm saying it's not the only reality, they want to create a situation where they have a, um, a technologically generated collective sub-reality, like a massive global cloud, as, as they call it, which is connected to the human uh, thought and perception processes and is feeding this fake reality that we think is real. I was and about to say, they're about. not wanting to just gauge reality, they're wanting to control reality to and... completely dictate it, yes, so that we become no more than robots. Literally, we become biological, indeed, with the transhumanist agenda, biological, technological That's what robots. they're saying. They David, have no I... ability to think outside of what we're being fed. That's where it's leading, and that's what we must address. Absolutely. Well, I know you've had a lot of projects going, and you just said you can come back on. Uh, anytime, two weeks, a month, whenever you're ready for another hour, hour and a half, please come on and break down the whole transhumanist deal. You can send some of your slides and documents. We can do a whole David Icke presentation here. It's been so important I haven't even plugged anything we're doing. Folks can find out all the great stuff you're doing at davidike.com, your latest book, speaking engagements and more. David, always informative and thought-provoking. Love the look of your new website. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Alex Susan. Bye. All right, take care. Now go ahead and talk to him before he goes, Nico, and let's line him up for the next interview while we got him. Uh, we're going to come back and hit uh, a lot of the more five senses news straight ahead. We're going to come back out of the rabbit hole a little bit.